What is up, Fabrication Nation? So, I get a ton of questions about two bending. And as you guys know, I don't really consider myself like the utmost authority on anything. It's just not the way I roll. But I like to kind of give you just enough information to make you thirst for more, go out there and figure out how to do it, and then maybe get your hands dirty and, and take on a project. So today we're talking two bending. I'm gonna give you my uh, my theory behind it, how I go about two bending, and maybe it'll give you that much knowledge. Maybe it'll inspire you to go figure out some more or go try it. Maybe it'll be just enough to give you some confidence to go try it yourself, and you'll at least be able to wrap your head around it, or at least wrap your head around the way that I do it. So, for the first time in a long time, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step instructional on how I bend tubes. If you're new to the channel, basically I'm building this, uh, what I call a modern day hot rod out of a Fox body Mustang. A lot of tube bending in this thing. Got just normal tube bending and notching. Got uh, some complex tube bending and notching where you have multiple bends on different axes. And so today what I'm working on is a back bar for this thing. So back here in the back, there's gonna be a bar that comes off the, this main halo, this main, this main bar. So come off the back, come up here around the rear tires. It's gonna be a simple, simple bend, but it'll be perfect for me to kind of show you uh, how I measure things out, how I make my bend recipe, and uh, hopefully it fits in the end so I don't look, I don't look too dumb. All right, so today I'm using inch and five eighths chrome molly tube, and this is my sample bend. So basically all I did is put this in the bender, and as it bends around, so I put a tube in the bender, as this thing bends around when it gets to like 10 degrees, I'd come in here and mark 10 degrees on this tube right here at the back die, okay? So where that die is is where that mark would be. So I'd mark it when I kind of snugged it up at zero, I'd mark it at zero degrees, then I'd bend that thing around to 10. Once it got to 10, then I'd mark it here. I'd bend it around to 20. Once it got to 20, I'd mark it here, and I did that through the entire bend. And so that's my sample bend. I use this quite often when I'm trying to figure out, you know, how many degrees I need to bend something. I can basically just put it up there and see around, you know, kind of see where I want it to go straight again and, and then just look at the degrees on that and I can kind of get an idea of how many degrees I want to bend it. That's not so much what I want to show you today though, but the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to have to have a sample bend. So whether you do this my way or if you use some kind of software, regardless, you're gonna have to have a sample bend. Even the software is gonna wanna know uh, how your bender bends and so it's gonna make you do a sample bend, take some measurements, you plug that in the software and then it makes the software a little more accurate as far as trying to predict how uh, certain things are gonna come out. So, need a sample bend, first thing. The other thing that I like to do is, you wanna know what the distance between the outer bar so, so this is a 90 degree bend. You want to know the distance between the outer bar on one side to the start of the bend on the other side. So you can measure from here to there, or you can measure from here to there, but you need to know that distance. You need to know how long it takes, how much distance it takes to achieve a full 90 degree bend. That makes sense? So for mine, it's eight and a quarter. So where this bar started to bend at zero degrees, it is exactly eight and a quarter inches till the outside of the bend once it's bent. Every tube, every tube die, every type of material is gonna be different. So you wanna get those for whatever that you're bending, whatever you're using, what works, for, what is the distance for mine is not gonna be the distance for yours. So you have to find that out. All right, so once you have that, once you have those things, you have your sample bend, you have the measurement, um, you just gotta figure out what it is that you wanna bend. And on this bend, we want a bar to come off this point here, kinda bend back 90 degrees, come over here 90 degrees and tie back into here. Okay, so we just gotta figure out uh, what the distance is from this bar to that bar. And since we're, gonna, since we're measuring from the start of a 90 degree bend to the outside, we're gonna measure outside to outside. The other thing I'm gonna to wanna to know is I'm gonna to wanna to know how far back this thing needs to come, okay? So if I want, once it's gone through its total bend cycle, 
this back bar. Well, how far back do I want this? Do I want it 19 inches, 18 inches, whatever I want. I need to know. So I need to know the distance from there to here and from here to there. All right, so those things are pretty easy to achieve. I know that from the outside of the one upright bar to the outside of the other upright bar is 44 inches. So that was that measurement. And then I knew that I needed to come back uh, probably like 18 to 19 inches back. So knowing those two things plus the distance it takes to bend 90 degrees with that particular tube, I can figure all this stuff up. I can basically create a bend recipe and the way that I've done that right here is that I know it's eight and a quarter from basically the start of the bend to the back side of that bend, right? So this is eight and a quarter. So eight and a quarter there and eight and a quarter here. So in order to achieve this 18 to 19 inches, I need to come back like a, like a foot is what I've kind of figured up. And then another eight and a quarter, which would actually be what, uh, eight to be like 20, 20 and a quarter inches on this one. That's what I'm gonna go with, I think. So you got the foot plus eight and a quarter. That's gonna get you back to this back side of this bar. All right. So I've got the distance this way figured out. I need to go at least a foot. And the thing is with this too is I'm gonna go a foot just to make sure that I have enough length. When I come in here and notch these ends, I can, before I notch those ends, I can basically determine what the length is that I want exactly. But I know I need at least a foot to kind of give me, you know, an inch or two of, of fudge room. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bend from the center out. So these are going to be the last pieces left. And I want to make sure that they're long enough. So, eight and a quarter plus the foot. Got that. And then this way. All right, so now that I've got the distance between where I'm going to notch it, or a little bit past where I'm going to notch it to the end, I know this, right? I need a foot plus eight, eight and a quarter to make the bend. I need to figure out uh, how, how to do this dimension here. And so basically what I've done is I know that from here to there needs to be 44 inches. So the distance between the outside of this bar to the outside of that bar needs to be 44 inches in order to match what's over there on the car. Uh, I know that it takes eight and a quarter inches in order to make this bend on both sides. Okay, so you take eight and a quarter and eight and a quarter, you subtract that from 44 and that leaves you with 27 and a half inches. So it's gonna have 27 and a half inches of straight bar in here in between these two bends. And then what I wanna do is I wanna split that perfectly in half, which gives me 13 and three quarters. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll put a mark directly in the center of this entire bar after I cut it. Before I do any bending, I'll put a, a mark directly in the center. Once I've done that, then I know 13 and three quarters out, make a mark. 13 and three quarters out, make a mark on the bar. I will start my bend here. I'm gonna go 90 degrees on it. And then once I get 90 degrees, I'll make a mark on the bar. Same thing on this side. I'll flip the bar around, 13 and three quarters. I'll start the bend right here. I'll bend that thing 90 degrees. I'll make a mark on the bar. Once that's done, and I can measure off a foot, I can measure 11, 10 inches, whatever it is I need to acquire the total distance, then I'll just measure that off and I'll hack the ends off. And there you got it, a U-shaped bend. Not only will I have a U-shaped bend, but I'll have a U-shaped bend that is the exact width to fit what I'm working on. The only thing that I have kind of left off on this is that since I'm bending from the center out, you want to make sure that when you take that thing out of the bender, when you put it back in, that it is basically clocked exactly like the previous bend was. Otherwise, you're gonna have kind of wonky ends. They're not gonna match up. The way that I do that is I just use one of these rotational gauges. So as I slide the bar in on the first bend, I'll put this on the bar, I'll zero it out. And then when I pull that thing out of the bender and I put it in the other side, I just wanna make sure that I re-zero the degree of clock on that bar before I bend the second bend. Pretty simple. Hope I haven't lost you. It's not it's not rocket science and I probably make it a little more difficult than it needs to be. If you can just visually think through these things in your mind, uh, it'll make things a lot easier. Just take your time to make sure that everything makes sense as you do it and you shouldn't have any issues. 
Let's bend this bar. Um, I'll, I'll let you kind of see it firsthand and maybe that'll help too. All right, so there you go. Pretty simple. Just the measurements like I showed you before. Bend from the center out. So I just measured, you know, the, what is it? The 13 and three quarters or whatever it was out. Started my bend there. Took eight and a quarter to get to outside here. Then everything lines up perfect. Just gotta notch it and she's ready to go in. I did, you may have noticed I did use a, uh, a ratchet strap to kind of pull the ends in and that was basically because I only probably only bent it like 88 degrees it wasn't a full 90 they were kind of out a little bit uh, rather than put them back in the bender and try to bend them the full 90 sometimes I like to pull it in because you can be a little more precise if you over bend then you have trouble trying to push those bends out so it'll fit so when I get close I'll put a ratchet strap on it pull it in exactly where I need it and then just tack it uh, in place so there you go, that's the way I bend tube. That's kind of the process that I use. I kind of uh, try to visualize it, kind of work through it uh, one step at a time. When you got multiple bends, you can't really plot each bend because what happens is when you bend that tube, it'll stretch it. And so it's gonna move your mark. So what I'll do is I'll mark the first bend, I'll bend it however many degrees I'm gonna bend it, and then before I pull it out of the bender, I'll mark the end of that bend. And then that way I know I can measure from there 13 inches to the next bend or whatever it is and then I can start from there. Once I get that one bent, same process till the end. So there you go guys, that's the way I do it. Hope that kind of helped in some way. Uh, if you're not familiar with this build, come follow me on the channel. It's the Bibster, it's the Fox Body Hot Rod. That's all I got for you today. I'll see you guys more this week. Go do work, son.